I'm Dave Hanson and we're in the little area called Naring, which is halfway between Cobham and Yamurka in a direct line basically. Um, we farm here, we trade a lot of sheep and cattle, so yeah that's basically a thing. We've got 850 acres roughly, 313 hectares, so yeah, and that's what we do, graze lucerne and clovers, bit of irrigation, about four, 400 acres of irrigation and the rest is dry country. Um, I'm in a best wool best lamb group at Euroa and a guy down there by Neil Harris, he was doing the deep soil manuring where he put chook poo, I think it's about a foot down under the surface to try and get better feed and carbon and all the rest of it. And so we actually had got, just given up 70 megs of water to Golden Murray Water in exchange for money to do, to laser 130 acres of country and um, we thought, well, we had to topsoil, re-topsoil um, some of it, so why not pull the topsoil off, laser the bay, put the chook manure down, and then the topsoil back on. So um, that was sort of how the, the project came about. So I got in touch with um, Greg Becker and Rhiannon at the Yay um, CMA office, and um, yeah, they said they'd be happy to contribute the chook poo to the to the project so that's sort of what happened um, so once that was in we um, we decided we we're going to sow loosen in the paddock um, they the DPI uh, CMA put in soil moisture probes so we were able to get um, results on our moisture levels right down to 80 centimeters uh, and so they're still in the paddock at the moment at the moment so I think I'm we're in the process of hopefully taking them over from the CMA so I get to keep them and keep monitoring our moisture in those paddocks. So we've got a control bay there and a and what we call the chook poo bay, which is where the chook poo's down a foot. And um, yeah, so we started off by sowing loosen into both paddocks, but we over sowed it with barley just because that's always the way of sowing loosen in the autumn. Um, we the lucerne, we had a failure the first year in the Chukpu Bay with the lucerne because the barley grew too too well, and we we um, yeah we cut two hundred and something rolls off thirty acres, and in the Chukpu Bay I think we had an extra third amount of feed, so we had an extra third of rolls of hay, but the lucerne didn't establish because of that, so that made it tricky because we had to go back in and re-sow the lucerne in that bay the following year without, an, without a cover crop. So that meant the lucerne in the Chukpu Bay was a year behind the lucerne in the control bay. But the feed tests, Greg Becker did uh, feed tests on the the lucerne, uh, the control bay and the Chukpu Bay that year and the Chukpu Bay was, was something ridiculous. Like I think they had to eat, they could eat a third less feed in the Chukpu Bay for the same amount of growth. So um, it was quite good. He was he, he was pretty keen to do it on a dairy farm where you could really monitor results as in, in the milking system. So yeah, but um, so the second year it all got established and away it went. But the trouble we had that year was the water price was at $280 a meg. So I said, well, I'm not gonna put water on our farm at $280 a meg. So we sold all the water, but yet the paddock still produced reasonable feed just on the summer rains that we got. And um, yeah, from then on, we've just been irrigating it. When the moisture level on the on the um, moisture probes get down to about 20 in the top 10 centimetres, because that's what um, the guys who put the moisture probe in said, that's roughly about when you need to water it. So that's what we've been doing. I've just been growing feed on it since and grazing. You can usually tell that the Chukpu Bay seems to hold its moisture better because it always stays greener for probably an extra, especially going into dry times, it seems to stay greener for an extra probably three weeks after the, then the control bay and the rest of the paddock. But that's, that's the control bay there. So the loosening in that bay is a year older than the loosening in this bay. And this is the Chukpu Bay. It's two in each bay, one at the top and one at the bottom, or nearly at the bottom. And they come back into this little jiggy here. I can then access a website which gives me my moisture probe 
which gives me my moisture readings down to 80 centimetres in both bays. It also does soil temperature. So at any time of the year I can hop on and see what the soil temperature is in the bays. So was it a worthwhile project? I suppose if you're doing the lasering we did, I would have loved to have put chook poo under the whole lot because I know now that for the cost of the chook poo, which was $1,500 for the bay, which was the bay's about a hectare and a bit, for that cost I will have got that back in grazing nine times over and I know it's still there and probably going to be working for me for the next 10 years.